Namaste, good morning. Uh, welcome to AVP Research Foundation live session on Sundays. And uh, I'm Somit. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, a very important or rather burning health issues which India is suffering from, that is uh, type 2 diabetes. If you look at the basic demographical situation today, uh, we have been seeing that India is in a cusp of being the uh, home of highest number of diabetic patients by 2030. And uh, it is so because the rate of obesity, the other lifestyle factors and diet being the major contributor for type 2 diabetes pandemic in India. So AVP Research Foundation has come forth with a very synchronized effort for addressing this major health challenge which India is facing and going to face in a big way in terms of lifestyle diseases. First of all, let us understand what is type 2 diabetes and how does it make it different from type 1 diabetes. Many one of you, many one, uh, when we talk about what is type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes, uh, the major difference is uh, first, this is the onset of the disease, and second, this excellence or functioning of pancreatic cells. Generally, a type 1 diabetes happens in very early age, and one of the major causes of type 1 diabetes is your own immune response or some kind of inflammatory response, which happens in uh, beta cells of your pancreas and your efficiency of working of beta cells or there is necrosis or destruction of beta cells leading to absolute loss of insulin secretion or very minimal insulin secretion by your beta cell. So if you basically look at the manifestation of type 1 diabetes, it is basically insulinogenic. That means you have no insulin or very less insulin to control your sugar levels. But type 2 diabetes is not primarily an insulinogenic issue. Of course, the when the disease progresses, then in some time, the amount of insulin secreted by pancreas decreases, but primarily the primary symptom of type 2 diabetes may be high sugar level, but it may not be true that they may also have less insulin secretion. And it's very surprising to know that a majority of type 2 diabetes patient, they have enough insulin that or rather than they have more insulin than what they require in their body. And this is called as hyperinsulinemia. That means you have high insulin level in your blood sugar. And they typically present to be obese or overweight and having other comorbidities like hypertension and other metabolic diseases. So, when we go through a lot of ads and media campaigns today that are we reversing diabetes or campaigns we talks about reversing diabetes, I say it's partially true. Yes, diabetes can be reversed, but provided you address to the cause of type 2 diabetes. And that is primarily first the insulin resistance. So 
As we talked about, type 2 diabetes happens because your body may have enough insulin, but it may not be absorbed by your cells in order to burn the sugar. Because once a insulin molecules is absorbed by your cells, along with a insulin precursor, also a sugar molecule comes inside the cell and a mitochondrial activity burns that sugar. And that's how your blood sugar goes down. But if this is disrupted and it leads to insulin resistance, this is one of the major cause of type 2 diabetes. Generally, such people uh, present being obese. If you look at their HbA1c, of course, it is altered, the three months glycosylated hemoglobin. Their insulin secretion will be not normal, but they may also have other symptoms of like polyuria, excessive urination, polyphagia. They feel like eating uh, a lot at regular intervals sometimes, uh, hunger pranks. And then also they can have other situation of fatty liver in, in terms of today, we are seeing a large incidence of uh, fatty livers. That means grade one, grade two, grade three. That means the fat is getting deposited in your liver. And it is one of a major signs of uh, not only fat metabolism impairment, but also insulin resistance. Because liver is an organ which metabolizes sugar in a big way. And if your body retains a lot of sugar, then this turns into calories and these calories turn into fatty deposits and that impacts the overall well-being also of liver health and thus it also impacts in metabolizing sugar. As we know, apart from pancreas, liver also plays a major role in managing your sugar levels. So, one more factor, what is very important is uh, the insulin sensitivity, that your cell should be sensitive to uh, insulin. And one of the major cause of non-sensitivity of insulin has been our lifestyle and specifically the sedentary lifestyle. If you do not include appropriate uh, exercise at the right time in the right proportion as per your uh, physical strength, we may end up having higher sugar levels. Reversing type 2 diabetes, as I told, is possible in those cases where you have adequate insulin, you don't have an aid any autoimmune response against your pancreatic cells and it is purely metabolic. That means you have a high sugar level along with adequate or more insulin than your body requires with obesity and other parameters we talk about, about metabolic stress. So the question is how Ayurveda approaches this situation. Many of you must have heard Ayurveda talking about a similar kind of syndrome which is called in Ayurvedic text as Prameha. And one of the cardinal symptoms of Prameha and specifically Madhumeha is Avila Mutratva Bhu Mutratva. So how to understand these two Sanskrit symptoms? That means bahumutrata is means frequent urination. Many a times when we ask our diabetic patients, almost 40% of the people do not have this symptom, but yet they are diabetic. Why? Because 
by the time the urine sugar or your system which is related to urinogenital system response to high sugar in the blood takes place and you see the symptom of polyuria or excessive urination, we see that we are not responding to it still in an Ayurvedic way. That means in Ayurveda, something becomes Prameha and we start treating on the lines of Prameha only when we have excessive urination. And by that time, invariably, the blood sugar has to be either 180 or more than 180 to see those symptoms in urine or urinary frequency. One of the major uh, symptoms which often our uh, patients report is a nocturnal urination. If, even though you may not feel high frequency of urination during the day, but some people may also talk about nocturnal urination. And of course, prostate is also one of the comorbidity which may impact that situation, but it is worth noting a pre-diabetic having this symptom. Ayurvedic texts have very elaborately talked about uh, prodromal symptoms, preclinical symptoms of prameha. And one of the interesting symptoms which we have been finding out in our research studies is that Pani Padeo Daha Chikanata Dehe. The patient talks about a mild neuropathic burning or pain in the peripheries. And in our research findings, we have found out that even before the urine sugar becomes positive, or even in a pre-diabetic conditions where your insulin levels are very high and you are about to become, your HbA1c is going to go beyond six, we see this symptom. So these are very important symptoms. People have to be aware to catch the progression of prameha or diabetes also into our system. And we need to address it in early stages so that it can be recovered. So our research data very well expresses that though only half of the population who come to Ayurvedic clinics for treatment of diabetes, type 2 diabetes, have these cardinal symptoms of avila mutratva, bahu mutratva, even though that other 50% don't have these symptoms, we have seen that among them, almost 40% people have prodromal symptoms or puru rupa of prameha. That means in due course of time, they will may start showing those symptoms. So those people, according to an Ayurvedic perspective, come earlier from our pathology. So what can we do? So as per the approach of Ayurveda, which is more holistic, which is more driven by what is the cause behind, uh, we have to understand the management of type 2 diabetes in uh, Ayurvedic perspective. So if you show all the cardinal symptoms, then of course, we put you on a Prameha protocol and uh, the Prameha protocol very well uh, defines a plethora of uh, diet and lifestyle changes. So what are those? Some of them are quite interesting because we all know that there are certain healthy cults, healthy lifestyle being followed and diet uh, advices being followed by many of us. And one of the healthy trend which we say eating seafood for omega-3. In Indian context and um, in context to Ayurvedic thought process, eating seafood may be good for thyroid function or it may be good for getting good quality omega-3 
fatty acids. But as per Ayurvedic text, all the anuprasaha, that means all the aquatic animals, meat or fishes or aquatic uh, flora should be avoided if you don't want to get the progression of type 2 diabetes or prameha in particular. According to Ayurveda, the seafood are vidahi because by nature it has predominance of water element and fire element which is promoting basically an inflammatory response in your body. And a very interesting thing has to be mentioned here. If you look to the pathogenesis of type 2 diabetes, as I told you, if the diabetes is not insulogenic, then how the sugar level rises? The first is the insulin is not absorbed by the cells. So it does not burn the sugar. And second is endothelial dysfunction. That means your own innate immune system creates a chronic or slow or low-grade inflammation in your arteries and in different cells. And that's why, why diabetes is also said to be as a silent killer because all of a sudden, a chronic, uncontrolled diabetic develops cardiac complication of atherosclerosis. That means their heart vessels are blocked. They have atherosclerotic changes leading to hypertension. And that whole plethora of uh, disorders which is associated with lifestyle can be seen in the diabetic patient also. So it's very important that a, a person who is either pre-diabetic, that means if your HbA1c is hovering around 5.7 or more or maybe crossing 6, please look into diet which is more plant-based, which is anti-inflammatory diet. So apart from regular understanding what is good for diabetic or not good for diabetic, you have to understand that Ayurveda has thrown a lot of light on not bitter things. It's, it's, our, it are, it's our general feeling that when you get diabetes, it is high sugar. So you eat a lot of pavakai or bitter god or bitter herbs, neem, another thing to reduce. So, of course, it reduces the sugar level, but it does not address the basic cause of type 2 diabetes is inflammation. So if you have to address that inflammation, you need to indulge in anti-inflammatory diet. And of course, there are a lot of herbs and vegetables stored in Ayurvedic texts, which are good for inflammation at the same time good for diabetes and right now coming back to our discussion on seafood according to ayurveda is to be avoided or water uh, animals like aquatic animals fish or all the uh, uh, aquatic uh, meat should be avoided if you are diabetic dadhi Yogurt. We all know yogurt is one of the most important uh, part of South Indian diet or Indian diet. And it's the best probiotic. On contrary, you will find many researchers also talking about the importance of gut microflora in manifestation of type 2 diabetes. That the kind of microbes which your gut has, if you have a pathogenic bacteria, you will lead to more higher inflammation, leading to higher sugar levels. But if you have good bacteria like lactobacilli or other uh, gut precursors, you will have a better control in the sugar levels. Now, then why yogurt is contraindicated? So if you look at the whole thought process behind the uh, 
such a recommendation in Ayurveda, it comes back from the concept of guna and karma. In Ayurveda, any diet is indicated or contraindicated in uh, certain uh, health conditions based on qualities and functions or functional aspect of the diet as to how it will interact with your human body and create a situation which will support the inflammatory process. So that's why yogurt is said to be as very guru, very heavy to digest. It is ushna, it is hot in nature and something which is heavy and hot like fish as we say and that's why in our traditional dietetics very few dishes are there where you eat uh, mix fix fish with yogurt which is one of the viruddha ahara in our ayurvedic text talked about viruddha ahara is one of the worst combination which will in fact trigger a very high grade inflammatory process in the system so yogurt because of its functional nature, though being a good probiotic, impacts the inflammatory process and can contribute in increasing your insulin resistance or inflammation um, in, in, in your body, leading to higher sugar levels. But then, how do you take a probiotic? So, charge the takra. So, same yogurt when you add three to four times water and then churn it and take your fat off and the other part which is uh, heavier stuff which you know uh, if you look at the traditional method of making butter and what is left was the buttermilk in fact that buttermilk is what is very good for which has all the necessary microbes and gut precursors important for a a good gut microflora you take and the part which is supernatant the yogurt so the olden technique of making butter that first take a to cow milk organic cow milk convert into uh, yogurt and once the dhi or yogurt or curd is prepared then you add water three to four times and then churn it so the fat and other protein and other uh, heavy stuff, they uh, coagulate and then they float on the top, which is called as makkhan or butter. And this butter is then processed into ghee. So that part has to become a ghee, but what is left with all necessary microbes and other essential uh, lactobacilli bacteria, you have to take as. Uh, buttermilk or takra what we say and this is very good for diabetics so you should take milk products from ethically sourced a to cow milk uh, sources but it should be processed in order to suit the uh, needs of diabetics payamsi all the milk products should be taken with care and especially the two milk products which is uh, generally allowed for diabetics is the yogurt uh, der like uh, uh, buttermilk derived from the yogurt or buttermilk as such takra and gita the uh, clarified butter what we say these two can be very safely taken by diabetics navanpa many a times we don't care about our traditional practices. Uh, if you look into a decade back, also, generally, even a shopkeeper used to know that they have to store a rice or a grain which is at least one year old. Of course, those practices are soon getting lost in consumerism today, and the supply chain being very uh, challenged by unprecedented growth in population of course i understand that but then in general one of the major recommendations for people uh, from ayurvedic text not to be prone to diabetes is 
If you indulge in eating grains, please store it for a year and then eat the grains next year. And in all our traditional practices, and even today in villages, people in fact store rice in big containers and then and, and, and after a year, only they eat. So why? Because that reduces the glycemic index because uh, then the, uh, the fresh carbs and uh, they condense into starch grains and which reduces the glycemic index of the, uh, so there are a lot of studies done how storing uh, reduces the glycemic index of the grains, especially carb predominant grains. So this is one important uh, aspect, which is very, 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 that's why uh, like, you know, old rice, uh, even in supermarkets, there are, uh, we, which is kept separately and we should opt for those kind of things. Again, it talks about any modified uh, forms of sugarcane. Uh, it can be a sugarcane syrup, it can be gur jaggery. Generally, this is a conception that uh, if you take brown sugar, it may not impact your sugar level, but is, that's a fact. Again, uh, you should not uh, try to take uh, any kind of uh, stuff which is uh, produced from sugarcane as far as possible. And so what is the best sweetener told in Ayurvedic text uh, for people who are suffering from diabetes? Um, and it is honey. Uh, again, it's very uh, misleading sometimes to see many videos and YouTube uh, channels talking about how do you mix honey with hot water or other hair herbs like lemon and, 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 and mint and other things to lose weight. Of course, it helps you to lose weight. It works. But according to Ayurveda, honey is one of the best source of sweetness. But one uh, caveat over is that don't eat, heat the uh, honey and take. That means you should not mix honey into any uh, thing, either preparation or water or any drink which is having temperature more than your body temperature. Because if you are using natural honey, of course, I, I we can keep debating that what uh, most of the uh, honey which is available in the market, they are uh, synthetically um, manufactured. So, of course, then this debate uh, is not true for that. But if you are using natural honey, which has a lot of enzymes, almost 400 odd enzymes are there. And if you add this honey into those, those all the therapeutic properties are uh, denatured of these enzymes and then eventually starts leading into uh, uh, side effects of uh, these denatured enzymes. And so, it ends up, of course, increasing your sugar levels, but not moderating your inflammation and immunological response in your body, which you expect out of a natural honey and which is told in Ayurvedic text. So honey is indicated for diabetics as an ideal sweetener, but provided you are taking a very natural honey. So what kind of food generally, apart from, of course, we all know about Karela, uh, like, you know, this uh, Karavelakam in Sanskrit, we told or bitter God is a well known, a uh, lot of researched uh, uh, product now, of course. But then uh, beyond that, also, there are a lot of, a uh, lot of uh, suggestions which we can talk about is, uh, and then again, a fruit well known is jamun or jambu or 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 uh, these novel param in uh, we say in the tamil language of course they are very good for uh, diabetes it's a lot of studies have been done but we many times fail to realize very common 
vegetables like uh, lady's fingers. Of course, now slowly awareness towards using lady's finger for a diabetic patient is growing. And especially there are certain things that you soak it in water and then um, kind of, you know, uh, take it in the morning. Uh, that is not exactly the Ayurvedic way of use, but yes, you can make um, uh, vegetable soups or vegetable curry out of um, this lady's finger, okra, and that does help in one of the very wonder uh, vegetable for diabetics, which we often forget is very simple kumbalinga or kushmanda or, or uh, beninkasa hispida, peta what we make, uh, you know, a sweet in North of India also, Agre Kapeta, this is famous. So that's one of the very important uh, vegetable, which I would like to uh, highlight is because of several reasons. One, it's one of the best uh, for your liver metabolism. It has very low glycemic index. But these days, a lot of internet uh, material is on is there on e, uh, drinking its again uh, juice rather than soup in ayurveda any vegetables uh, have been uh, primarily told to be taken um, not raw but cooked unless and until there are certain fruits like cucumber and other things which we can take as salad as a raw but then this particular peta or usnika uh, what we say has to be properly made as a soup either you can blend it or even in there are a lot of south indian traditions where they are with more or takra or the buttermilk they are cooked in small cubes and they are given uh, taken as a, 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 a very uh, interesting relishing dish during the lunch time uh, we say pudicherry with uh, this uh, in, in, in Kerala tradition, they eat a lot. So that's one of the very important uh, vegetable. First, it has low glycemic index. And second is its, its property to reduce or cut down fat. As I told you, type 2 diabetes is a metabolic syndrome where we will have to have a lot of uh, parallel network of imbalance which creates. So if you have to reduce your insulin uh, resistance and manage type 2 diabetes, losing weight is also important. And one of these forgotten vegetables is this uh, pusnika for diabetes or weight loss. Now slowly it is getting um, some kind of trend, but importance is take it cooked. Don't eat raw because many a times with raw, Again, the whole debate of cucurbitacin because it's form, uh, it is part of uh, a family which may have uh, high levels of uh, cucurbitacin. That is not very uh, sometimes good when it is taken as law. So please um, uh, boil and take as soup. Uh, you can add some spices like uh, uh, especially uh, black pepper is one of the best spice to um, allow the bioavailability. So when you talk about one of the few spices which uh, comes to your mind, uh, then dry ginger, black pepper, and turmeric is one of the frontline spices for uh, type 2 diabetes and use uh, in um, adequate or moderate quantities based on what your body type is. If your body is very heaty, of course, you can't take a lot of spicy. In that case, dry ginger is a better option if you are a kapha, what uh, body type you can have um, uh, black pepper. Uh, so these are certain iterations. Then one of the best spice to detoxify your system at the same time, uh, also flush toxin out from the your kidney good for diabetes is uh, coriander seeds. So dhanyaka, what we say. And, and um, there are a lot of... Uh, healthy practices which we can involve where these uh, coriander seeds can be uh, boiled in water in the night and kept soaked overnight and then next day you can filter and take this water. So it really 
uh, cools your system, flush out the toxins, and also maintains your good uh, glycemic control as well as there are certain herbs, of course, in the regular practices, of course, apart from uh, bitter god and uh, one of the uh, any again, uh, it's part of a, a, your you know Gongura tradition, part of Telugu um, dietetics. People have forgotten it. It's called as hibiscus sabdarifa. Uh, what we make uh, Gongura chutney. So the main um, the, the 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 fruit or the flower of Gongura which is reddish color hibiscus flower. Uh, it's less talked, but a lot of, uh, lot of uh, uh, evidence has been building around that it's very good for your uh, uh, glycemic control. So this is one thing which is uh, to be again revived. And uh, yes, uh, these are important uh, diet and uh, kind of, you know, spices which helps for type 2 diabetes. One important last message which we have to give is how do you plan your meal? And one of the major uh, component of uh, preventing or reversing diabetes, if it is reversible, is calorie restriction. Researchers have shown across that if you restrict your calories up to 900 calories, six to 900 calories a day, you can reverse your diabetes if you have enough insulin. And the problem is only insulin resistance or insulin sensitivity or obesity. So if you reduce your weight, if you improve your insulin absorption and uh, reduce your insulin resistance, uh, this would be very uh, good for uh, major outcomes. And, and, and for that, one very important message is what do you eat in your dinner? So <clears throat> you can do a best way to do calorie restriction, intermittent fasting is eating early. Stop eating by uh, 6.37 by sunset and don't eat heavy food in the night. In fact, in our modern day lifestyle, this is one of the Major mistakes we are doing is we have heavy dinner. The heaviest meal of our day is dinner. It has to be reversed. If you have a heavy breakfast and lunch, that doesn't matter. You should have a very light meal and preferably plant-based meal in the night and avoid high calorie. Even I would, I keep on telling my patient with don't have too much of proteins in the night or avoid proteins in the night because they have high calorie and take more fiber rich vegetables. So a big bowl of uh, cooked vegetables in the night uh, that gives low calories and then you can fast. So if you plan your calories around 900 calories, it can kick in uh, the whole reversal process. And uh, this is one of the major uh, ways to manage your type 2 diabetes. Last is, again, uh, one is exercise. It's very important when you can burn your uh, sugar the best. So there are two uh, uh, quarters in your day. One is before the sunrise, that is between the Brahma Muhurta, what we say in Ayurvedic text, is just before 45 minutes just before sunrise, that's the best time to do your physical exercise or before sunset. So around two hours before sunset in between that, like four to six, if it is six o'clock is sunset in India as such. So that's the best time. And if you see between morning and evening, evening is more essential because evening time, the circadian research suggests that Burning of sugar in uh, muscles are more efficient in the evening. So uh, if you are uh, indulging in dial exercises, games, sports, swimming, or any other uh, gym or cardio exercises, if you are indulging in kindly uh, indulge that uh, or, or do it in the evening session. So. 
these are few things which we would like to uh, we wanted to share today with our uh, our listeners and our uh, our uh, whole network of people who are interested in following AVP Research Foundation um, information. Uh, and I really thank uh, that uh, you have been giving a lot of support to our whole initiative of practicing uh, evidence-based or practice-based evidence Ayurveda. And um, every Sunday we are coming up with uh, a newer information, a more scientific information and practice-based evidence information in different kinds of diseases which we are treating at AVP Research Foundation as a part of our specialty Ayurveda healthcare initiative. So please uh, subscribe to our Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram channels and keep updated about our latest information videos and and do review us on our uh, pages and google uh, uh, also uh, for your feedback thank you